Oftentimes, as first responders, you are faced with a scenario where you might want to inspect the vehicle. And one of your options is to conduct particle sampling. And if you recall to the other lectures that we have provided for you in this workshop, we have referred to particle sampling based on the fact that you have oftentimes transfer such as primary or secondary transfer. So for instance, a person that has been packaging drugs for transport may have um, drug particles on his or her hands and would obviously transfer them to the vehicle as they're stepping in or driving the vehicle. So areas to test for particles include the door handle, um, the gas cap. Um, once they enter the vehicle, as a person drives, they are, make contact with the steering wheel with their hands as they do the gear shift and perhaps the mirror in order to uh, adjust their view. And these are areas that you can target for sampling. In addition, you may go to the rear of the vehicle and other areas to sample include the trunk area as the person handling the explosives or drugs may have hidden them within the trunk and as a consequence have transferred some trace evidence from the package to their hands and thus onto the trunk area. So this is also a good place to sample for particles. This vehicle contains an electrical box um, and within that electrical box that has holes cut out, uh, we have a plastic bag that contains um, smokeless powder. So we have two containers, uh, one tightly sealed plastic bag and within and that bag is within an electrical box. So there are two electrical boxes containing smokeless powders. And we just wanted to illustrate that you can sample the headspace of a larger volume area as compared to the can as you saw previously. And uh, the piece PCPME device would absorb these vapors. So we're opening the trunk. And you can see the piece PCPME device that has been suspended in the headspace. taking it to the instrument, inserting it into the desorber, and pressing trigger. So we have detected explosives. Um, three peaks are detected in the IMS. In the negative mode, we see DNT, the nitro peak. In the positive mode, we have DPA. And these are all indicators for smokeless powders. So this is to demonstrate that in a large that piece be me can be used in large volume areas effectively to sample odors that are emitted from drugs and explosives. Now, we have to bear in mind that these explosives have been contained within two containers already. So this just shows that the odors were permeated through the bag and outside of the electrical box, and the piece be me device, which was suspended within the trunk statically was able to absorb these vapors and with the aid of the IMS detector we were able to see three distinct peaks that are indicative of smokeless powders. And we're going to desorb once more because we have absorbed so much of these vapors from the sampling time that we've exposed the piece beaming to within that trunk. And again, we still see DNT and nitro, two additional peaks on the second desorption. Now we will perform a dynamic piece PCPME extraction on a hide that has been placed in this car. And again, the hide is an electrical box that contains a bag that has been heat sealed containing 50 grams of a smokeless powder. And that has been in the car. Now we will take the piece PCPME device and introduce it into the instrument in order to obtain a blank sample. Trigger. Okay. The no alarm ready sign indicates that the PSPME is blank. We'll remove it from the desorber and place it into our air sampler. I will now open the car door and sample our hide, which is located under the driver's seat.
We have now sampled for 30 seconds. We'll introduce the device into the ion mobility spectrometer. Pressing trigger. And explosives were detected from our hide, from the air surrounding our hide. And bear in mind that this is a, um, a small amount of smokeless powder contained within an electrical box sealed inside a plastic bag. And the compound that we detected was DMT as an indicator of smokeless powder. 